There's a lot of terrible people that love their kids. There are. There's a lot of terrible people that love their family. That don't know God, that are really kind of morally horrible in their own personal lives, but they still love their kids. But after you've spent some time walking with Christ, after you understand what the love of Christ means, what it means to sacrifice yourself for somebody else, then you can reach the kind of love to where you would give up your own soul to see them saved. Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, we're going to take a quick break from our first Samuel series because, frankly, the, one of the reasons that this week has been so hectic is because I have been in literally eight to five classes all day today. I, you guys know I'm in grad school, and uh, I'm a Bible major. And so we talked a lot of Bible things, and, and we found it was kind of stumbled on a topic today that I thought was just fantastic. By the way, found out my professor is actually a fan of the show. So if you're watching Dr. Parker, hey, glad that you're with us. But that was kind of cool to find out your professor watches your show. Um, to understand how we came across this topic, there was a female student that was talking about how she has gone out and, and spoken to different ladies groups and one thing that she finds very difficult to deal with, and I mean, when I tell you what it is, you'll say, well, yeah, I, I understand why that's hard, is there are moms that have kids that are not saved. And unless they change their ways between now and then, or, or maybe they even passed away already, they won't be there in heaven with them. And, and the mom is asking the question, how can I enjoy heaven knowing that my kid is not there? And... Yeah, that's a difficult question to answer. And I don't have a good answer. Especially not being a dad myself and not even knowing what the parent-child relationship is like. And there were a lot of really great parents in that class that had some very insightful answers that I appreciated. But I'm not even going to attempt to talk about that one. But you have to understand that that's kind of the way we arrived at this particular verse and I think that understanding that backstory will help you understand the point that I'm about to make. And this is Paul speaking to the Roman congregation, where he says in Romans 9, verses 1 through 4, I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have a great sorrow and an unceasing grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed separated from Christ for the sake of my countrymen, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom belongs the adoption as sons and daughters, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the temple service, and the promises. What Paul is discussing there is... It's pretty spelled, I don't think I have to spell it out for you. It's pretty clear what he's saying. The Jewish people, who I have a great deal of love and affection for, my entire family is a part of that nation. Um, this is a guy who was a Pharisee, who was trained in classical Judaism. I mean, he was, according to his own word, a Jew among Jews. And it tore him up inside that the vast majority of the Jews rejected Jesus. That they were the ones that were actually responsible for his crucifixion. That so many of them have known the Torah and known the old law their entire lives. They've been looking for the Messiah and they were standing there and saw him in the flesh and couldn't figure out that it was him. That just broke Paul's heart. And part of the reason that it did is because he knew what was awaiting them because they refused to accept Christ. He understood what was going on with that. 
And it really does break your heart, too, to read this, that he has an unceasing grief, something that he can't get over, to the point to where he would be willing to give his own salvation in exchange for Israel, to allow them to, to know the truth. Now, that's not how salvation works. But I think, and this is the reason that my professor and some of the other students brought this verse up, I think that this is the closest thing that we can get to to the kind of pain that they're describing. When you talk about knowing that your kid, your child, or any other family member, because remember, Paul calls them his kinsmen here. He thinks of the Jewish nation as his family, and, and they are related by blood in some way. I mean, they, they all have a common ancestor in Abraham. And I think this is really the closest example that we can see of somebody having a dilemma like that, where Paul is so distraught, knowing that there are going to be so many Israelites that miss out on Christ, that he would be willing to give up his own salvation in exchange for theirs. But isn't that exactly what Jesus did for us? Think about the verbiage that Paul uses there. He says, I would rather that I be accursed and separated for Christ for my sake so that they could come to know Christ. Isn't that exactly what Jesus did for us? Cursed is every man who hangs on a tree. Christ bore the curse of sin, so that we could have salvation. Did Christ gain anything out of that? I mean, he was already in heaven. He was already living with God. So why come to earth and be cursed himself in exchange for our salvation? See, Paul can't do that. Because Paul's a person. He's a human. He's not God. He can't make that decision he can't give of himself to save anyone because he's flawed. His human blood is incapable of saving anybody else. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, had that ability. And because of that, he voluntarily allowed himself to bear a curse so that we could have the curse lifted from us. He bore the shame and the guilt and the curse of sin so that we could have ours removed by his blood. And so, I don't even know if Paul realized what he was doing when he wrote this. But this is a great example of what it means to show the love of Christ to another person. That he is so distraught by seeing his Israel, Israelite brothers and sisters perishing, that he would be willing to bear a curse for them. And if you think about familial bonds the reason that God gave them to us in the first place is so that we could better understand our relationship with him, right? Part of the reason that he makes us dads and moms is so we can understand what God sees us like. You know, the, the patience that it takes, the concern for your kids, that's all magnified a hundredfold when it's God's relationship to us. And so we have that relationship so we can understand our relationship to him a little bit better. But you can't love your kids more than God does. It is impossible. You as a human being who is finite cannot possibly love your kid more than God does. You conceived them and you raised them. God made them. He knit them together in the womb. And he's been closer with them and more intimate than them than you can just because you're not all-knowing all and omnipresent. You can't know them the way that he does. And so he loves them even more than you. And he wants them to repent. He wants them to be saved even more than you do. Guarantee you, and Paul would attest to this if asked, that when God is, is seeing Paul write this, he loves the Israelites more than Paul does. How do I know that? Because he did bear that curse. 
he did go to the cross and be crucified of his own free will in order to give us that salvation, in order to save Israel and everybody else. And if we're commanded to follow Christ's example, if we're commanded to love people the way that Jesus did, Paul just gave us a master class in that. If we want to love people the way that Jesus wants us to, if we want to extend that love of Christ to other people, this is the attitude we've got to have. To the point to where we would be willing to bear the curse of sin. Now, we already have our own curse of sin, and that's the reason we're incapable of doing this. But that we would be willing to bear the curse of somebody else's sin if it meant they could be saved. And frankly, that scares me. Because I don't think I'm there yet. And I'm not sure that I ever will be. That I would be willing to give up my salvation for somebody else. But I bet there's an awful lot of parents that, if they're not there, they're bordering on it. That they understand this love of Christ. And that's a kind of love that you can only have by walking with Christ. There's a lot of terrible people that love their kids. There are. There's a lot of terrible people that love their family. That don't know God, that are really kind of morally horrible in their own personal lives, but they still love their kids. But after you've spent some time walking with Christ, after you understand what the love of Christ means, what it means to sacrifice yourself for somebody else, then you can reach the kind of love to where you would give up your own soul to see them saved. And if God was willing to give up everything that he had and empty himself and walk this world in the form of a man and be brutally tortured to death for crimes he didn't commit, and that's what he calls us to, that is a tall order. And one that I don't think you can reach without years of experience and a lot of prayer. And that's something I'm going to be praying for, and I would encourage all of you to do the same, because that's going to be something that I can't get to easily. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?